Hello, everybody. How are you? If you can hear me, give me a five in the chat. If you can hear me, give me a five. We have kind of like a weird setup because as you can see, we're going to be getting really nerdy. But I really, really want us to have a talk. So how are you guys doing? How are you feeling? What are you thinking about? Like, how is everybody? And can you see me and hear me okay? Hello, good evening. How are you? Thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you, Kitty Cake. You guys, make sure that you look at all of the posts that Kitty Cake is making because she is letting y'all know everything that there is to know as it pertains to the different things that we have to offer. But today we are going to talk about care miniaturization. How many of you know what that is? Let me know really quick in the comments. How many of you guys know what hair miniaturization is? Hey, how are you? Let me know if whether or not you know what hair miniaturization is. If you do not, it is okay because that is what I'm here for. So that is what we are going to talk about today because there are so many different things that lead to balding, right? But at the end of the day, it all starts at the same time. Spot. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. So this illustration that you are looking at right now on the screen is a really good illustration of what is going on within your scalp. I want you to see it again really quick. That is what is resembling a dirty scalp. This is what is happening. But when it is cleansed, when it is detoxed, this is what is going on. So today we are going to talk, talk about, talk about, today we are going to talk about how hair miniaturization leads to balding, right? So what is it and who does it affect? It affects all textures, all races. Let's take notes, all right? Again, let me know whether or not you've heard about it before. Most of you are saying that you have been. Well, guess what? If you have experienced thinning or balding, if you are a person, hey, hello, how are you? If you are a person who has experienced balding or anything or thinning where you're noticing the change in density, you could be experiencing this. And it is very easy to fix, but you can't hack it, all right? So real quick, what I need you to do in the comments, because this is going to be interactive. This is a long one. I need you to give me two roadblocks. Give me two things that you feel like are always getting in the way. The hack slow down our hair growth cycle. I'm not saying that it's a hack, but give me one thing that you feel like is slowing it down. So let's hop right into this if you stick around to the end i am going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get this full entire session right i am going to be sending it out to everybody on my email list so if you sign up for my email list you will get this entire lesson right you will get this entire lesson so what is it what is hair follicle miniaturization it is a process where hair follicles shrink in size over time leading to thinner and finer hair this phenomenon is often associated with androgenetic alopecia or male and female pattern baldness. So when you are experiencing alopecia or any type of hair loss for that matter, the very first thing that you are going to notice is your hair follicles beginning to shrink and get smaller. That's actually what's happening. All right. Hair follicles go through different growth phases, including the anogen phase, the canogen phase, which is the transitional phase, the telogen phase, which is the resting phase, right? And again, you guys, give me a two in the comments if you watch the two videos that I have on the anogen phase and the canogen phase. I'm telling y'all when I'm teaching y'all stuff, it is for a reason. If you haven't seen it yet, it's okay. Make sure you just head over there. It is okay. You can watch the videos. They're going to be here forever, right? All right. So in individuals prone to miniaturization, the anogen phase becomes shorter. That growing phase, the anogen phase is a growing phase. It becomes shorter and the hair shaft diameter gradually reduces with each growth cycle. 
And this means that if you are a person who is experiencing hair miniaturization, you may have, let's say, when you was in your late 20s, your late 30s, your hair was thick and full. And now you notice you don't have bald spots, but your hair is looking thinner. That is because over the years through the hair growth cycle, something that you've been doing has been causing your follicle to shrink. And in return, it is decreasing the density and the thickness of the hair shaft. All right. That's all. And that is it. All right. This results in the hair becoming progressively thinner and more delicate. And this is why so many women around the same time that things that cause hair miniaturization in the first place were happening. Everybody became scared of combs and brushes. This is because hair miniaturization is setting in for a lot of things and causing the hair to be weaker. But we're, we'll get there in a minute. Hair follicles go through different growth phases, including the anogen phase, the growth phase, and the transitional phase, which is the next leading into the next one, which is the telogen phase, which is your breasting phase, right? In individuals prone to mineralization, like I just said, the anogen phase is going to be shorter. So as your hair becomes progressively more prone to breakage and weaken, right? Miniaturization is influenced by, listen, a ge like it could be genetics, right? But when we're talking about genetics, there are multiple things that go into your genetics and we're going to tackle that. We're going to get into enzymes today. When I tell y'all we're getting nerdy, that is what I'm talking about. So if you hear the hacks, mm -mm, this is like science class. Pull out your notebooks, okay? Okay. So, Hormonal factors and genetic factors really, really are going to go into your hair shedding and thinning out. But remember, when we're talking about genetics, we're talking about habits, the foods that you're eating, the patterns, working out, all of that. We'll get to that in a second, right? But the number one thing that we're dealing with is the hormone DHT, right? I'm not saying it. There it is right there. DHT binds to the hair follicle. We hear about DHT all the time, but what does it do? DHT binds to the hair follicle, causing the hair follicle to shrink. And then because the hair follicle is shrinking, the hair follicle is not able to produce as many cells as it was before. So you be creating little punk hair strands. Like for real, they be little punks. You touch them, they poop and break. Your hair is weaker. And as soon as you comb it, as soon as you brush it, your hair is always breaking because your follicle is being attacked by DHT. So what is happening, again, the anogen phase becomes slower and is causing the follicle to shrink and produce weaker hair and shorter hair strands. So over time, if you if it's left unchecked and if you keep doing the patterns that led to the miniaturization in the first place, it leads to baldness, hair loss and baldness. All right. So to counterfeit this process. Right. Some treatments like medications, medoxidil, medoxidil is rogaine right? Or hair transplant surgeries are available. You can do a lot of different things to slow down or to reverse the effects of it. But a lot of times when you take things like um, minoxidil and things of that nature, once you stop taking it, it, it takes whatever hair you grew while you was taking it. If you're like, girl, you was ridding this hair from minoxidil. Thank you very much. You ain't been paying. So give me my stuff. So I really want y'all to think about that. Hair follicle miniaturization, which leads to thinning hair, can have several causes, but the primary factor is often genetic and hormones. Here are a couple of key causes. First of all, when it comes to your genetics, androgenetic alopecia is also known as male and female pattern baldness and is most the, one of the most common causes of hair follicle miniaturization. And if your family has a history of baldness, most likely genetically, you will be predisposed. Blah, 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 blah. I can't talk. You will be most likely somebody that is going to have it, is what they will tell you. 
right? This is what they will tell you. But the truth of the matter is that's not really true. If you really sit down and think about it, when you look in a family, most people eat the same. Most people think the same. Most people have the same type of patterns. Most of the time in a family, it's only a small section of people who have patterns and routines that are different from everybody else's. But for the most part, everybody's doing the same thing. So because everybody's doing the same thing and when, when a scientist scientists sit down and they look it's like okay genetically this bloodline has this disease but then when you look at the data genetically everybody eating the same things all the time everybody eats the same little bit amount of fruits and vegetables all the time so those are all things that you have to take into consideration when you're dealing with stuff like this when it comes to genetics right so hormones Hormonal imbalances, especially an increase in DHT, play a really big role in hair follicle miniaturization. DHT is a byproduct of testosterone that can shrink the hair follicle over time. And so this is why in, in videos where it seems like I'm intense and I'm like, no, don't do that. It's because with the team natural thing they they really didn't understand because they didn't study the science of hair they don't understand that with hair things take time it'll take time for your hair to grow back and it doesn't take double the time for baldness to actually show up for example if you have telogen effluvium right the telogen effluvium is induced from stress but you you're not going to lose your hair as soon as it happens for example my father passed away when my father passed away, he passed away January 7th. Playing start losing my hair. Was it January 7th? Yeah, it was January 7th. I didn't start losing my hair on January 7th or on January 8th. No, my hair started falling out like three, four months after my dad died because the, the results and the aftershock of what happens that causes the balding happens over time. This is why instant gratification that you get from products is, is short-lived. That's why every other month it's a new product. That's why every other month it's a new hack because it's short-lived. All right? I need y'all to get into it. Give me a five if you still with me. Give me a five if you still with me. All right? So yeah, that's where we at with the follicles over time. So aging is another thing. As individuals age, the hair follicle can naturally become more sensitive to hormonal change, changes, leading to miniaturization. Let's be real. If you if you been walking if you've been walking around the earth for a seventy bone, right? You you seventy. You're walking around for a big seven seventy bone. You know what I'm saying? Like your hair follicle been through some stuff. It may need a little extra help. Right. So it is normal for your body to get tired. Once we hit 30, our body stops producing certain amino acids at the same rate. So it is then our responsibility to put those things back. Right. So next up will be medical conditions, certain medical conditions like a whole lot of the different ones that I'm going to have coming up next. Right there. I'm going to list them in a second. A whole lot of these disorders can really, really lead to hair follicle miniaturization like PCOS. We've talked about this in so many different videos. So I want y'all to make sure that y'all are looking at all of the videos that I've done because I broke down PCOS and exactly how your body, your hair suffers from PCOS and what to do with it. Next up will be medications. Some medications such as those for cancer, high blood pressure and depression can lead to thinning as a side effect, right? So poor nutrition is also a really, really big thing that goes into it because remember, your hair growth cells are made within your gut. So if you are, if all you're eating is food that you warm up, if all you're eating is food that you got to pick up from the drive through then your body does not have enough ammo. Your, your body is like a car driving with no gas. And instead of it having actual gas from the food that you're giving, it's eating itself, right? So that's what's happening. Next up will be stress. High levels of stress can trigger hair loss, which will then 
cause the hair miniaturization process to happen even further if your hair shaft is stuck in the telogen phase for long periods of time or if it's stuck in the catalogen phase for a long period of time the catalogen phase is where your hair's follicle is no longer attached to the blood supply so if it stays there for a long period of time what ends up happening is your hair ends up growing a lot slower than it normally does. And then sometimes it just stops and becomes dormant altogether. All right. So by addressing certain lifestyle changes and like tackling just I told you guys before, like make a list like what what different things. Right. What different things. Put it, it, what different uh imbalances are being caused by the medications that i'm taking right what different imbalances so let's say for example let's say this is just an example let's say a medication that you're taking one of the side effects is you have been poor iron absorption right so if you if you now have poor iron absorption from one of the products i mean from one of the medications that you're taking then the next thing that you should do is find you a herb that aids the body in iron absorption and then just make sure that you check with your primary care physician and make sure that that herb isn't going to interfere you know with anything that you got going on and you're good right i'm going to get to some of your comments okay we don't have any everybody's just listening I took screenshots. Yes, I need everybody to be taking screenshots. Okay, I need, I need all of you, screenshot, screenshot. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for chilling with me. I'm gonna try to get through these slides fast, but um, we have a lot to get to. As we're going, you guys, you can ask questions as we're going. I'm gonna come back over here and check because if you guys get stuck or confused somewhere, I don't want to like keep talking because. I don't because just all right. So hairstyling practices that involve excessive heat, chemicals, and tight hair scalps can indeed damage the hair and contribute to the process of hair miniaturization. Now let's get to a little bit more information. Now let me do that. Do me a favor, real quick. Do me a favor, real quick. I need y'all to say you good, sis. Or you good, seeing or just say you good. If everybody is okay with me speaking frank, because that is what I'm about to do. I explain hair miniaturization for you, right? And as I explain hair miniaturization for you, next I am going to explain to you guys how the patterns and the things that we've been doing. And I'm going to give it to you in great detail. All right? I'm going to explain to you how we've gotten to this place. So if you sense it, Go on, get, go on, get. Tell them go on. Hold on. I just want you to see me. I just want you to see me. Oh, that's why it's not moving. I'm I'm on two laptops. Go on, get, go on, get. Tell them go on, get. I don't get, get. Nah. Okay, I'm gonna be back in a minute, but. Okay, excessive heat, which we know. Frequently using hair straighteners, curling irons, or blow dryers at high temperatures can weaken or damage the hair shaft, making it more prone to breakage and thinning. Heat styling tools can also strip the hair if it's and of its natural moisture, leading to dry, brittle strands. Now, the reason that I brought this up is because what happens across social media, people see parts like this, right? They see posts like this or information like this. And then from this statement here, they'll say, all oh, flat arms are bad. All oh, blow dryers are bad. No, that is not what this means. That means that if a tool is used improperly, ooh, if a, a tool is used improperly, if the tool is used too much, then it has damage on the hair. Anything that you do to the hair is too much. Listen, if you shampoo your hair too much, you can damage it. Combing your hair too much, you can damage it. It's, it's a method to it. That's why most people go to cosmetology school to learn the method not a lot of people that go to cosmetology school trash i know i went to trash boo boo sprinkles i know i get it i know i know i used to fix their work all the time i know they garbage i know 
but the good ones right went to school learned the information and stuck with it so i'm just giving you i'm just giving you what i got so stay with me give me a two if you with me. i love y'all thank you okay we good we good all right all right okay so chemicals Harsh chemical treatments like perms, relaxers. Give me a one in the comments really quick if you know the difference between a perm and a relaxer. Real quick. Let me know in the comments if you know the difference between a perm and a relaxer. And if you do know the difference, can you explain it? Real quick for me, please. Okay. Like perms, relaxers, and bleaching can weaken the hair structure. These chemicals alter the hair's composition and make it more sub. Listen, this is the portion, right? I want y'all to see me again. Y'all can read this. Everybody do take screenshots because I'm not going to read everything word for word verbatim because then we're going to be here all day. But I want you all to look at me when I say this. When we're talking about chemicals and everybody's like, I don't want to color my hair because chemicals are bad. Absolutely, if they are done wrong. Most people are, would go to get henna to color their hair before they use professional hair color. Henna is more damaging to the hair shaft than color is. If you have henna in your hair and then you go to a hair salon and you want like another color on top of it, if hair color is added to henna, it starts to smoke. Why? Henna creates molecular bricks to the inside of the cortex. So henna, most people think henna is temporary hair color. Henna is not temporary hair color. Tempor henna leaves a temporary hue on the hair shaft, but the molecule that henna is it, is, it links to the hair shaft and it lives there forever. It has to grow out or be cut out. This is why if you go in to see a cosmetologist and the first thing that she's going to do is book a consultation and one of the first questions they're going to ask is, do you have henna in your hair? Moreover, there is a like, look on the back of professional hair color, like a uh, prof. Look on the back of professional hair color. It says, this is not going to work good with henna. It has a henna warnings. We have henna warnings on professional hair color. Henna is not temporary hair color. It lives in the hair's follicle forever. So when we're talking about, when we're talking about henna, when we're talking about hair color and all of that, it is so imperative that you know what you're doing. It's not that chemicals are damaging. It is the improper use of chemicals that is damaging. All right. Relaxers. Good. Yep. You got it. How to treat premature gray hairs. Just the same way you treat the rest of your hair. The only difference is they don't got no melanin in it no more. You know, you're not treating it no different. I do women with gray hairs, the hair the same way I do everybody else. I don't get a different brush or a different comb. I don't get a different leave-in conditioner or a different. I don't use different products for women who have gray hair. That's the only difference between a woman who has gray hair and a woman the only difference between a woman who has gray hair and a woman who doesn't have gray hair is the woman who doesn't have gray hair still has all of the melanin in her hair shaft. That's it. Just because melanin is out of your hair shaft doesn't make your hair abnormally weak. So don't worry about that. All right. So tight hairstyles, wearing hairstyles that pull the hair tightly, such as tight ponytails, braids, <coughs> crochet braids, <coughs> crochet braids or cornrows can place stress on the hair follicles over time. This constant tension can lead to a condition known as traction alopecia, which may contribute to the hair thinning and even permanent hair loss in severe cases. All right, so that is so important. It is so important to understand that to maintain healthy hair and to prevent further miniaturization of the scalp, it's essential to be mindful of these hairstyling practices that we're using. Using heat styling tools sparingly is a thing. Choosing gentle hair products and avoiding 
overly tight hairstylist can help to protect your hair follicle and your hair from stress in general. So product buildup can directly contribute to hair miniaturization, particularly if it leads to scalp issues. And the thing is, because of social media, people are under the impression that to do your hair, you need to pack products on like y'all. It is insanity. Like it is insanity the way that you see people do hair. Like right now, people think that hairstyling is incorporated with products. Absolutely not. Products are tools. As a hairstylist, as a professional, you use products sparingly. The fastest way to mess up your client's hair in the shop is to use too much product. The fastest way to mess up my client's hair in the shop is to use too much product. You don't, we use it like dime size amounts in the shop. Y'all be having puddles in your hand. It makes a difference, all right? Using a lot of products like styling gels, mm -hmm. sprays, and mousses can create buildup on the scalp. This buildup can clog hair follicles and potentially lead to conditions like dandruff or cerberine dermatitis. Give me a five if you have noticed the outcry and abundance of black women with dandruff and cerberine dermatitis. Black women have dandruff so much that it is a it was a service. In, in the hair salon to go in and get your scalp scratched. And like most black women think that dandruff is normal. Dandruff is not normal. Dandruff is an overproduction of sebum within the hair shaft. But most black women think that dandruff, if you ask most black women what is dandruff, they're going to tell you dandruff is dry scalp. Dandruff is not dry scalp. Dandruff is oily scalp. And most people, when they have dandruff, they go to a hair salon. And I understand, I understand the irony. You're going to a professional cosmetologist. It's insanity. I know. I'm sorry. You're going to see a professional cosmetologist who is supposed to know that dandruff is an overproduction of oil. But it is with the dermatologist that you go and get all of the dandruff scapped off your scalp. And then you get an oil treatment. Then you get your hair washed and blow dried. Then she abrade it and slap, slather it with oil. It is literally insanity. When you think about it, dandruff is an overproduction of oil. If you have dandruff, oil should be as far away. You shouldn't even have oil in your house if you have dandruff. If you have dandruff or cerberine dermatitis, you, did, you shouldn't even have an oil product in your house until the cerberine dermatitis or the dandruff heals. It shouldn't even be in your house. It makes no sense. Give me a one if if give me a one if that makes sense to you. How can you cure a overproduction of oil with oil? I need you to see me. Hold on. I'm not being rude. I'm just an intense talker. How do you repair? How do you stop an overproduction of oil by adding more oil? How does that work? Like, I'm not being a smart ass. I really need to. How does, how does that go? Does that make sense to you? Let me know. I'm not being an asshole. I just want to know. Like, does that make sense to you? Because it could just be me. Oh. Okay, next up, weighing down hair. Some hair products can make the hair heavy or greasy, which can lead to your hair appearing thinner and flatter. Over time, constant use of heavy products can affect the overall health and appearance of the hair shaft. Like layering the lock method is literally one of the worst things you can do to your hair. Your hair follicle only absorbs 36% of what you put on it. Only 36%, right? And not to mention, when, when you do the lock method, you use a liquid or oil and a cream, right? When I say your hair is only going to absorb absorb 36%. I don't mean it's only going to absorb 36% of the liquid, the oil, and the cream together. No, ma'am. The first product that puts that's put on your head 
That's all your hair is going to absorb. That's why in a hair salon, when you in the salon, if you come sit in my chair, I'm shampooing your hair, putting conditioner on it, spraying leave-in conditioner in your hair, blow drying it, and then I'm not I'm not putting anything else on your hair to penetrate it. Everything else that I put on it is just setting the style until you wash your hair the next time. Dude, so do that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Let me know in the comments real quick. No, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right, good. All right, to prevent product buildup from affecting your hair negatively, it's important to use the right products for your hair type and wash your hair regularly to remove any accumulation and residue any product residue. Using products is okay. Y'all, listen, I have been a licensed cosmetologist for over a decade. I use hair products too, but hair products are tools, right? They're tools. And if you're just using them sparingly, they don't cause problems. It's when you have more than that 36% on your hair, that's when you have follicle problems because if your hair only absorbs, if you put a liquid and oil and a cream on your hair while it's wet, your hair only absorbs 36% of the liquid. So the, 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 the cream and the butter or the oil is still sitting on your hair. And guess where it is? It's in the hair follicle. That's why black women have so much seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff. Y'all take globs of product. Where is it at? It's on your pillow and it's in your follicle. That's why black women across the board have an insane amount of seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff. The follicles are full because everything that you do to care for your hair blocks the hair follicle because we're under the impression that that's what we need. We do not need hair products. We do not. We don't. That's why uh, sometimes I, I get comments from people that are like, oh, you never answer my questions about products. And I never will because I don't I don't I don't put that responsibility on hair products. Hair products are tools like Olaplex. Olaplex come out and you want to leave Olaplex responsible for all your deals. Right. Olaplex, they come out with shampoo and conditioner now. Every other product don't work. And now you got to use Olaplex for everything. No, Olaplex is a bond reconstructor. It is a bond treatment. Yes, they have additional products that help you along with the styling process. So you're not damaging the bonds after they reconstruct them. But you don't have to only use Olaplex. You don't. Your products have sections they have reasonings behind them and when you find out what products go where then you're good so the 36 percent is it needed regularly what 36 percent no, you're, no, your hair doesn't need anything externally. When we're adding hair products, we're adding them to aid us in styling hair. Your hair doesn't need anything. You have a sebaceous gland that I'm going to show you in a second. To prevent, we're, I'm going to get to that question in a second. I'm going to show you visually. I got you. To prevent product buildup from affecting your hair negatively, it's important to use the right products for your hair type and wash your hair regularly to remove any accumulated residue. Ensuring a clean and healthy scalp is crucial for maintaining optimal hair growth and thickness. All right. Supplemental is amazing. Remember what we just talked about when it comes to DHT, right? When it comes to DHT, 
DHT is the thing that is attacking your hair follicle, but this herb is thought, and so many studies have proven for it to inhabit the enzyme, the 5-alpha reductate, which converts testosterone into DHT. Lowering the DHT levels can reduce the miniaturization of the hair follicle. So on my website, I'll show you guys when we finish, but over on my website, I actually have um, a bunch of extracts. They're actually the things that are behind me. So we'll go over a couple of those because you can easily add extracts to your diet. I also have supplemento in blends within the apothecary. So we're there. So let's get into symptoms of enzyme deficiency. Okay, give me a one if you've ever heard of enzyme deficiency. Let me know. Okay, so let's talk about it. You will see digestive issues with insufficient enzyme levels with bloating, gas, diarrhea constipation, and undigested food in stools. This is probably TMI. If you experience any of these, let me know. And even if you don't let me know, write it down for yourself because most likely if you are experiencing hair loss, if you are experiencing thinning, you are also most likely experiencing different problems with your digestive system. I'm going to say it again. If you are noticing your hair thinning, remember everything is connected. You may also notice that you're going to have a problem boo-booing. You may be bloated, looking pregnant for no reason. You may be pooting all the time. You may either not be able to stay out the bathroom or it ain't no reason for you to go in there because ain't nothing coming out. All right? Now, if your body doesn't have enough digestive enzymes, it's unable to break down foods properly. And if it's unable to break down food properly, guess what? You're not able to produce any biotin. Biotin, people think that biotin comes from an outside source. No, baby, biotin is produced within your gut, within your microbiome. And the only way that you can produce it is if you're giving it food which is healthy fruits and vegetables. Hair loss can be one of the consequences of any serious digestive problems like afflictions, uh, like uh, afflictions, like irritable bowel syndrome. Give me a two if y'all remember the video that I did last week on IBS. Y'all, I don't, I don't make the videos for views. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. IBS or Inflammatory bowel disease, IBO, can mess up your digestive tract. And in return, it will affect your skin. It will affect your hair growth cycle. This means that your body may not get the proper nutrition that it needs to get from the food that you eat to produce healthy hair, skin, and nails. So what is the most common enzyme deficiency? I need everybody to take a screenshot right now and give me a tool after you've taken the screenshot. The reason that I need you to take a screenshot, I need every person listening to the sound of my voice to research this on their own time. I want you to research this and I want you to, especially if you are a person who is dealing with thinning, balding of any in any way, shape or form, I need you to research this. And when you research it, you're going to be like, oh my God, this sounds like me. Oh my God, this sounds like me. It's the little things. We're so worried and pressed about hair products. No, Hair, pro hair products are not the, so what does it, how is a hair product going to help you with an enzyme deficiency? No, it's deeper than hair. It's deeper than your hair products. So what can weaken hair follicles? The first thing, environmental factors. So exposure to dirt, soot, harmful chemicals due to pollution may cause oxidative damage to the hair strands and the follicles, which will in return weaken the hair's root, follicle miniaturization, right? Hair changes may range from like a whole bunch of thick hair to being thin to you having scalp irritation, burning sensations, dandruff, 
or dry hair. So notice how they say dandruff too dry. That's like saying from oily too dry, right? So oily, they would if if dandruff and dry scalp was the same thing, they wouldn't say they. I wouldn't say dandruff. When I say they, is because it's what I learned in school. You wouldn't learn, or the body wouldn't be. You wouldn't learn dandruff. You would just learn dry scalp. It's a form of no. It says dandruff to dry. That means oily to dry. Frizzy and brittle hair. All right. So this is the next thing. I need you to take a screenshot of this and look it up and see if you have this deficiency. I already did it. I'm this is for you. And it's free 99. Screenshot, give me a two when you got it. I need you to look this up. And then the next thing that I need you to do is look up what fruits and vegetables can I eat to 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 curb this? What what herbs can I ingest to curb this? And guess what? I got it. All the herbs that you need in the apothecary. But screenshot. You got it. All right. So when symptoms are triggered, they include. Fever, dark urine, abdominal and back pain, fatigue, and pale skin. Most people recover in a few days without treatment. However, patients are at risk of reoccurring episodes. So you might want to avoid the triggers that cause it in the first place, right? So let me know in the comments if you have any of those symptoms and what they are. So give me an another. I need you to do it again. Screenshot time. Anytime you see these, what diseases are caused by enzymes being lower, I need y'all to screenshot this. And I need you to research every herb that I have every herb, Lord. I need you to research everything that you see. Everything that has a bullet next to it, I need you to have a journal. And each journal in each in your journal, each one of these by the bullet needs to have needs to have a, a paragraph under it. I need everybody listening to the sound of my voice. If if I come and ask y'all what these disorders are, what these different syndromes and diseases are, I need you to be able to tell me. Like we should know more about Will Smith and Jada than we do about what's going on in our body. We like forget that. Because guess what? If we all know this, guess who's not going to have to have these conversations? All right. Enzymes are protein chemicals which carry a vital energy factor needed for every chemical action and reaction that occurs in our body. There are approximately 1300 different enzymes found in the human body's cell. Anogens. So when we're talking about androgenetic alopecia and things of that nature, these this is where these terms are coming from. So, anogens androgenetic alopecia that is where this word is derived from so anogens such as testosterone testosterone is converted into dht within the body but this when we're talking about androgenetic alopecia we're talking about dht attacking your body and your follicles killing their cell. okay everybody screenshot this screenshot this too i need you to have this I need you to know where it is. I need you to know about it. I need you to know about it. I need you to research it. Forget are you in the back? Oh, careful. People just demand. Okay. Yeah. People just on my head to, to make them grow back. Like, forget about all of that. Okay. Uh, next one. I know y'all tired of screenshots, but as you can see, we got a lot. The cover a lot screenshot a lot of times you when a lot of times things just go they just go uncovered my daddy used to always tell me like things are only a problem when you don't know about them when they go unseen but like yeah screenshot and research these yourself you might be able to find answers for yourself easy okay now, scientists have discovered that inhibiting a certain type of enzyme inside of the hair follicle 
it makes it so you have excessive hair growth. So now I need you to now screenshot this, give me a two when you got it. And I need you to research what foods and what herbs have this naturally. Let me know when you got it. Yes, thank you. You are, oh, I like that. Hold on, where you go? You said, thank you. <laughs> you are taking us from not knowing what we don't know to knowing what we don't know. Oh, girl, I gotta say that. I like that. That's cute, girl. Make it time to put it on the shirt. Oh, so yeah, I need y'all. Y'all got it? Okay, good. So I need y'all to research and I need you to what foods, what fruits and vegetables can you ingest? What herbs can you ingest that have this? Please stop looking for hair products as we go along. Give me a five if you if you are with me and understanding that so far where you're learning about enzymes, how in the hell can the hair product help you with anything? Please let please please. Hey, what what do we hey? Come on. Okay, what enzymes help hair grow? And in a minute, I'm going to tell you exactly what fruits and vegetables you can eat. So you're not going to have to research them yourself, but stick around, baby. <laughs> so this enzyme is often associated with skincare, but it is a really important enzyme found in fish, meat, and vegetables. This can improve your scalp circulation and increase tissue oxidation. Listen to me. If you are a person who is suffering from telogen effluvium, that means that the, your, your, your follicle is dormant. It is resting. So if you if it's resting and you are intaking this enzyme into the body naturally, that means that the food that you are eating is literally tapping your hair follicle on the shoulder. Like, hey, get up. We back. We're not stressing no more. Get up. Take this screenshot. Take this screenshot. I'm going to tell you exactly what to eat, but take the screenshot. So, again, this is another enzyme that helps. This lives in cells throughout the body, mostly concentrated in the vital organs. This means that animal organ meats have the highest amount of this enzyme per gram. For instance, a beef heart has 11.3 milligrams of it and a beef liver has about 3.9 milligrams of it and a chicken heart has about 9.2 milligrams and the liver has about 11.6 milligrams. I'm not telling you to eat the livers, but if we're talking about the enzymes that the body needs, this is where they're at, right? And of course, you can get it through plants and stuff. We, we're going to go there. I'm going to get there in a minute. I'm giving y'all all the options. Stay with me. See, listen, boo. I got you. This is why I'm saying this thing. Listen, boo. Listen. Hold on. Where's my mouth? Wait. I don't know. Hold on. Oh, that's, that's ghetto. Oh, but whatever. I can't find the mouse. But yeah. Anyway. So another thing, the foods that have this enzyme. Remember, we're talking about enzymes and how to get them. Forget a hair product, okay? Organ meats, like I just talked about, heart, liver, and kidneys. Some muscle meats from pork, beef, and chicken. Fatty fish like trout, herring, uh, mackerel, and sardine. Uh, ooh, my mom loves sardines. Yuck. Vegetables like spinach, cauliflower, and broccoli. Fruit like oranges and strawberries. Legumes like soybeans and lentils and peanuts. And nuts and seeds like sesame seeds and pistachios. Right, so your screenshot, you got it. Let me know when you got it. And then if you stay and you signed up for my email list, everybody's gonna get this whole uh uh huh, whatchamacallit. Everybody go get this whole thing tomorrow. All right, so studies have shown studies suggest deficiencies in vitamin B12 and D biotin, bioflap riboflavin, sorry. <laughs> Iron and other nutrients are associated with hair loss. Eating a balanced diet that is rich in these vitamins and minerals can promote hair growth, especially if you're experiencing hair loss due to poor nutrition. And a lot of times that's exactly where the hair loss is coming from. All right. So some more foods you can eat, organ meats, like I just said, hearts, liver, kidneys, some muscle meats. Just said that. I think I just read this already. Good idea. My bad. 
player. All right. So here are some more enzymes that can increase hair growth because the enzymes improve the blood flow in the body. And remember, when we're talking about the blood, the blood is responsible for moving things throughout the body. So it'll clear out the blood from impurities that are causing the different types of oxidative stress to the follicle and all types of stuff. So since systematic enzymes impact your overall health and wellness, they'll have an impact on your hair growth too, 100%. So it's really, really important that you guys are really paying attention to it because the systematic enzyme that we have right here, screenshot, has an anti-inflammatory property when it is used in a substance, when it is used within your diet in the right way. But if you are not like ingesting the right amounts of fruits and vegetables and stuff, you're going to have a really bad issue because certain enzymes are really here to make sure that you are able to get rid of cellular waste in your blood. So it's not just about boo-booing and going to the bathroom, right? It's a whole lot of things that are responsible for your enzymes that support your liver functions. So you're able to remove, your body is able to get rid of toxins. We're not supposed to be doing the lock method and holding on to stuff. And, like we're not supposed to do any of that stuff. All right. So that's something that I really want everybody to think about. So everybody make sure that you stay caught up with me. If you have not done so already, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Like we have been here all this time. I'm about to start taking some of y'all questions in a second, but like get this video a thumbs up. Why wouldn't you give it a thumbs up? So I have questions for you. Now we're about to start getting interactive. What are your roadblocks? What are your roadblocks? And these are not rhetorical questions. Please answer them in the comments. If you are watching this on replay, answer these questions for your girl on the replay for the people. Just do it for the people, for me. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? So what are you going through? What are you experiencing? What are your roadblocks? Are you constantly hitting a growth wall, like your hair will grow to a certain length and then that's it? Are you having a great growth journey and then having a big setback, like balding or thinning and you don't know why? Are you noticing that your hair is shedding a whole lot and you don't feel like you're doing nothing wrong, You nothing has changed, but you're losing a lot of hair? All right. Let me know in the comments. And as you guys are typing, because I know it's going to take a little minute, because unless you got, you know, little power fingers, make sure that you go ahead and screenshot your favorite part of this webinar and tag me on Instagram. Here's my Instagram. Like I said, make sure you tag me on Instagram, screenshot your favorite part of this lecture, and you have something special. I am doing a giveaway on some stuff from the apothecary. So let me know. Let me know. So I have already told you guys my story, right? Um, I didn't know what Hydronitis Superativa was at first. I had no idea what it was. All I knew is that I was having inflammation in my scalp and different parts of my body. So I went to the beauty supply store just like you and I got everything that was over there and I tried everything and I put everything on my head and it made it worse. And it wasn't until I tried everything that I said, okay, I am a licensed cosmetologist. Let me go into the science. And I actually did go back to school. And once I started learning more, it wasn't, it was not right away that I started to implement the things that I knew because I thought I knew everything already. By the time I went back to school to learn the things that I've learned about the human scalp, I had already been doing hair for like eight years. So I just knew that I knew everything that there was to know until I sat down. And when you have facts in front of you, it's, you can't argue. You just can't. And it wasn't long before I had thinning and balding, burning and scabs in my scalp and lines of demarcation in my hair because I didn't understand what was going on. And I was fighting an internal problem from the outside. I had to learn that my problem was internal. I had to clean my body from the inside out. My body was attacking itself. That's what hydronitis superativa is. So I had to find a way to get my body balanced from the inside out. I learned that the artificial meat in the artificial hormones in meat triggered my outbreaks, right? With hydronitis super T, but it triggered that. I also had to learn that highly acidic foods caused the outbreaks in my scalp. 
I also learned that heavy oils and butters on the scalp blocked and clogged my follicles, which triggered massive outbreaks. When I stopped it, everything went away instantly. All of the money that I had wasted over the years on products, literally, I felt dumb because I had spent hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of dollars on hair products just to figure out that was my problem. Because once I did a deep detox, and when I say deep detox, I did a detox from the inside of my body and on the outside of my body. And once I did that, it was like, oh my God, like it, it was, I could feel my scalp breathing in a way that I had never felt it before to the point that it kind of freaked me out. Like, whoa, it felt like my hair, my scalp was licking peppermints after shampoos, right? So a scalp detox and a scalp exfoliation and a full body detox from head to toe was all I needed to do. So this is my goal for you, you guys. My goal for you is for you to gain control over your entire hair growth cycle. So it's so important for you to learn everything about your hair. What is the cuticle and why is it so important? What is the role of the hair's cuticle? What is its role? What is my porosity? What is the role of shampoo and conditioner? Because shampoo and conditioner is not the devil. It is actually one of the most powerful tools. You know why? The only thing that actually belongs on the scalp is shampoo. And if you're putting anything else on the scalp, it should be something that is prescribed to you by a dermatologist to kill an infection. Because guess what? If a dermatologist prescribes something to you, it is with a comedogenic oil that is going to go right within the hair follicle and it's not going to block it. And it's carrying a, 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 a medicine that is going to kill the bacteria that lives there. So let's do it. Give me a five if you with me still. Give me a five of you with me. I need you to try this. Everybody's supposed to have a pen and a paper already. So I need everybody to make sure it's constantly out, right? And what I need you to do, I need you to get your journal and I need you guys to start writing stuff down. You need to be looking just like sis in the video. Like you, you need to look like sis in the video. So I have these questions for you. How often do you shampoo? When? do you deep condition when do you trim when do you exfoliate what oils do you put on your scalp these are not rhetorical questions i would love it if y'all screenshot it write this stuff down answer it for yourself and it'll also be great if you can answer it in the comments but we, we need to get it done we need to try something. I need everybody to be accountable because if we don't have accountability, we are going to get absolutely nowhere. I don't work without accountability. All right. So are you ready to break old foundations? Because we can't put new wine in old little dusty little bottles. All right. So give me a five if you're going to make sure as soon as this video is over, you go and watch all of my videos, not all of my videos, my last three videos, especially the one that went up yesterday is already left in the description box below where I break down the salt bond, the hydrogen bond and the disulfide bond. And it is so important for you to understand these three bonds. So what have you heard? What rumors have you heard? This is not a rhetorical question. What rumors have you heard? Number one, curly hair is weak. Number two, curly hair has no oil. Curly hair does not produce its own oil. Have you heard that? Number three, curly hair should only be worn curly. And if your hair ain't worn curly, you ain't, you don't like being black. You ain't, you ain't black. Number four, hair products help hair grow. Number five, heat breaks hair off, period. You should never use it because it breaks hair off. No exceptions, right? Let me know. These are the things that I want you to get into. Number one, I need you to detox. Detoxing from the inside out is pivotal. It is so important. It is a non-negotiable. The more green you can implement into your diet, the better. If you want to break down old foundations, if you want to induce hair growth, hair growth happens within the analgesic phase of your hair growth cycle, which is happening in the follicle. 
and your hair is growing based on what you're putting in the good increase the amount of fruits and vegetables that you are eating and you are good the next thing that i need you to do right is clarify i need you so, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put clarify first. My bad, boo. The next thing I need you to do is exfoliate. When you exfoliate, you are you are getting dead skin to rise up. You're lifting it up. You're just lifting it up. But then when you clarify and use a clarifying shampoo, you're removing the dead skin that you lifted up. For example, when you if you build in a house or something, you're going to sand the walls down, but then you got to sweep it up. You sand it down, sweep it up. So the 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 exfoliator is the sander to sand the wall down to smooth it all out. And then the clarifying shampoo is the broom to come and sweep everything out. Okay. Then I need you to make sure you condition and deep condition, but not on the same day. Because you wasting stuff. If the if the hair shaft only absorbs 36% of what you put on it, the hair shaft is only absorbing 36% of the condition. That's all it needs. It's only taking what it needs. I'm not saying that the, the your hair shaft has 100% of what it needs, but for your hair shaft to get to the 100%, it only needs 36% of whatever you put on it. It's not going to take in all of that. It's not going to take in everything that you put on there just because you put it on there. No. So you do, you use conditioner just standard when you wash your hair. You do deep conditioning on a day that your skin cell turnover. You do deep conditioning on a day that you use the clarifying shampoo. All right. So product buildup. Again, comedogenic. Give me a two if you know what comedogenic means. Comedogenic oils and butters block the hair follicle and throw off the scalp's natural pH balance and the hair shaft's natural pH balance. Comedogenic literally means something that tends to clog the pores or in in, induces the formation of blackheads and the only reason that is enforcing blackheads is because it's clogging the follicle and when it's clogging the follicle the natural sebum that's in there can't get out so that is what's happening all right thank you so much the mindful career woman for the super sticker i appreciate you so much i'm gonna put it up in one second so remember, products are not the cure. You need to be cleansing, protection, exfoliation, oil pulling, and product and bond reconstruction. That's what products are made for. Nothing else. Yes, coconut oil goes in your pina colada. It's not in your hair. Um, clean the scalp. Remove dead skin cells cleanse the cuticle, and balance the pH level of your scalp. That is all you need to do. The moment you put oils and butters, you change the scalp's natural pH. Even if it's a non-comedogenic oil, your scalp doesn't need it. Everybody who, the, the, the thing about women who want to argue that I still oil my scalp, why? Nobody can give me why. Why does your scalp need extra oil when your follicle has a sebaceous gland? Nobody can answer the question for me. The only answer they got is that grandma used to do it. That's not a good enough answer. Air drying slash blow drying. For me, I am anti-air dry. The average person has 100,000 follicles. Each follicle has one to four strands, which means the average human being has 100,000 follicles. I mean, 100,000 strands to 400,000 strands. And to let your hair dry, air dry, you're letting all 100,000 to 400,000 strands dry at different times. All of your follicles are independent. So none of them are linked together. They're all doing their own thing. And then after your hair is dry, then you're going to pick up a bunch of products. And the only reason y'all using so many products is because you let your hair air dry. So once it's air dry, it's hard to comb through. And the only way you can comb it is if you wet it or cover it in products. But guess what? If you didn't do any of that, you wouldn't need all those products. If you just blow dried your hair or if you just gave yourself a roller set or a flexi rod set or something where you set the bond without going five hours just sitting there looking crazy, letting it air dry, you wouldn't run to those issues, right? 
wash and goes. I can't stand wash and goes. Okay, I just can't. But if you have to do them, you need to set your curls. Sit under a dryer, right? It's still gonna like even though the woman in this picture is beautiful, right? She's absolutely beautiful. Her hair is beautiful. Her hair is only looking like that at the beginning of the day. Most likely she's going to wet her hair multiple times through the day and that causes hydro fatigue and, and follicle miniaturization over time. That's why we've been talking about follicle miniaturization. Yeah. Because it causes hydro fatigue. Hydro fatigue is when the follicle is forced to swell and unswell over and over again. When your hair is curly, your hair swells when it's wet. So the, every time you wet your hair, you swell your hair within the follicle. That is what hydro fatigue is. And the more you swell and unswell the hair follicle multiple times in a day, you end up stressing the hair follicle and then hair miniaturization happens. I'm going to get to y'all questions in, in a second. We almost done. Where is the breakage from? Get let me a two if any of these relate to you. Wet top knot buns. Are you guilty of this? Any of them? Let's be real. Let's be real. Wet top knot buns. Wet detangling. Daily wet styling. Cuticle and follicle blockage, meaning grease in the scalp, packing the follicles full of, full of petroleum and butters and oils and stuff. All right. Protective styles. So a lot of times, if you do it too many protective styles, there are, there's nothing protective about them. Wigs. Wigs are okay for special occasions momentarily, but it should never be a everyday thing. Never. Weaves. Weaves are another one. Weaves are great. I have one in right now, but I'm not going to leave it in for two months. It won't be in for two months. It won't be in for centuries. They all have their time. They all have their their limits. Glue, I'm not saying you can't use it, but again, it has its limits. Tape, I don't do tape. That's not a thing. Relaxers, as long as it's done properly, you're good. But everything that's on this list can go horribly wrong if certain patterns are not followed. So you have a lot of things that happen to the hair shaft that are long term. When we're talking about damage to the scalp, things that happen to the scalp, we can repair that. The hair shaft is not the same. Once your ends split, that is it. They're getting cut off, right? And there are so many hair shaft disorders. When I was standing behind the chair, the one that you see at the end, trichinoriasis, nodosa, is one of the leading causes of breakage that most black women have. When y'all see videos where their hair is see-through, this is what their hair looks like under an electronic microscope, under an electron mic microscope, I'm sorry. But what happens is when y'all are doing the lock method, liquid, cream, and oil, or however go, liquid, oil, and cream, think about it, especially the one in the upper uh, left-hand corner, if that, that piece right there is broken and it's horrific, right? But if every day you, you doing the lock method and then you don't even use shampoo, you only use co-wash and conditioner and you've been doing that for three years. This happened, this is a real life thing. This is, what I'm about to say is one of the main reasons that I am no longer behind the chair, I was done. And after they will have three years of the lock method, liquid oil cream and then they if you have three years of liquid oil and cream on the picture that's in the upper left hand corner it's going to appear that your hair is good if you have liquid oil cream layers and layers of it on the picture that's in the lower left hand corner your hair is going to look and feel like it, it feels and is really healthy but guess what when you go see a licensed cosmetologist like me you want to know the first thing i'm gonna do the first thing I'm going to do when you sit in my chair, the very first thing I'm going to do is give you a follicle detox before I touch your hair. I'm giving you a follicle detox and a hair shaft detox. I want to work with a blank slate. And the thing is, if you've been doing the lock method, if you've been doing all that, when I do a clarifying shampoo on your hair, that's what it's going to look like. 
That's why you would see the videos where they come with their hair all stretched out. And then once I straighten their hair, it's see-through. That's because it was a lie. It was a band-aid. It was a band-aid cover they were putting on things, but it wasn't real. That is the issue. That is the problem. So the, the things that can lead to long-term things are here, right? Is this you? Single strand knots, flaky and itchy scalp, dry hair and scalp, breakage or a hair growth wall. Are you there? If you grease the scalp, the reason that I keep playing this illustration, if you grease the scalp, you have a layer of petroleum on top of the hair. So the things that those little black dots represent the things that live within the hair follicle. So if all you do is co-wash and then coat the follicle with something that's going to block it, everything that's in the follicle is just staying there and it's not able to get out. This is why as soon as you use something like Miracle Drops, for example, Miracle Drops, it actually works 100%. You know why? It works because it is killing massive bacteria. Most black Black women's follicle look like this. So then when you get something that has strong antimicrobial uh, benefits, like that's why everybody's like, put cloves in your hair. Cloves are not making your hair grow. Cloves is removing and killing this bacteria. So this, this video that y'all see in this illustration, that's what cloves is doing. And then once that blockage is gone, the hair can grow. That does not mean clothes is growing your hair. It means that you have caused a blockage within your hair follicle that clothes is getting rid of, that rosemary is getting rid of, but it's not growing your hair. So I have a question. Do you have over three hair products and we're not counting shampoo and conditioner? You should not have over three shampoo, over three hair products, period. Not included shampoo and conditioner. It should not be more than three. And three is kind of overkill depending on what style you're doing. It shouldn't be more than three. If you're doing a flat iron, it shouldn't be more than a leave-in conditioner, a heat protectant, and a serum. Three. If you're doing a blowout, it should be nothing but a leave-in conditioner. And you shouldn't even need, you don't even need three. All you need is a leave-in conditioner and a serum or like some Shea Bay to put on your ends once it's done being braided. But you don't add Shea Bay to the hair as you braid because then the Shea Bay gets on the scalp and Shea Bay doesn't go on the scalp. It's for the ends. Number two, are you, do you do a big chop every two years? It's not a thing. That should not happen. Do you have the same thinning spot over and over and over again? That shouldn't happen. Something that you're doing is causing your hair to thin out. Your hair is not falling out by itself. Do you have over 10 tools that you never use? Or lastly, do you have the longest wash days ever? Is your wash day over two hours long? If your wash day is over two hours long, you are doing something wrong. You should not be in your hair for eight hours. You should not be in your hair for five, six hours. It shouldn't happen. Now, if you're doing a weave, that's one thing. Obviously, if you're braiding your hair doing a weave, obviously, that's going to take a little longer. But if you you just putting products in your hair and twisting it with your finger, no. Absolutely not. So, this is the process we're going to go through. I need you to first go within to target the problem. The hair growth block is within, so I really need you to, this is this live is not going anywhere. If you subscribe to my um, website, which I'll show you how to do that in a second, you'll get this full, this full lecture. I'll send it out in slides, so you'll have it. All right, but I need you to do what I told you to do at the beginning. If you wasn't here, rewind it. I need you guys to do what I told y'all to do at the very beginning and figure out what you're doing wrong and have some serious accountability. Like, you don't, I'm not going to be there. Nobody going to be there. Your mama ain't going to be there. Your dad ain't going to be there. Your baby daddy, nobody. Just you. Be accountable. It's nobody's fault but yours. Number two, detox and balance the natural pH within to cleanse the blood. 
if you've been taking screenshots, you know why I'm saying that. If you don't know what I'm saying and you didn't see that part, rewind it. All right. And then next up, we're going to say cleanse the scalp. For Sorry about the tea missing. I'll have the tea there when you guys get it. <laughs> and maintain a healthy pH level. Keep sebum flow uninterrupted. That means stop putting all that oil on your scalp. So task number one, I need everybody to take a screenshot for these next tasks that will be coming up. Please, 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 please for me. All right. Task number one, I need you to do a self-consultation. Ask yourself the real questions. Don't be fake with me or yourself. Let's go deep. How intentional are you with hair growth and hair health? How often do I shampoo my hair in a month? How many times do I wet my hair in one day or in one week? And how much do I comb my hair through the week? Okay. Strategy number one. First, we're going to make a list of any illnesses or disorders that you may have, big or small. What does your body lack due to this illness or disorder? And then what food contains the amino acids that your body is not producing. Take a screenshot of that or remember, come back to this video. The second strategy, what is your diet like? What foods block the natural cycles of the body? Next up, what changes can you make? Next up, what food combinations trigger healthy blood flow? Make these connections, screenshots. Okay. Next up, third strategy, detox the body, detox the scalp and detox the hair shaft. Like start over. None of the old stuff that you've been doing is working. So start over. So I have a question. What do you think about what we've talked about so far with everything collectively? I, thought, I didn't think y'all would stick around this time because I had to break to break down hair miniaturization, I had to also break down enzymes. And I'm like, are they going to want to hear that? But let me know. What do you think? From a scale, on the scale from 1 to 10, do you, when I say 1, like you disagree? Like, was this video, like, good? Like, or was it bad? Like, with 1, it's like, was it like, this is dumb. I don't agree with that that she's talking about. This don't make no damn sense or are you like oh yes 10 out of 10 i understand oh my god i didn't know this stuff like where are you where are you thank you for communicating with me so i'm going to get into your questions in a minute but i do need everybody to be honest let's talk in the comments let's like have a super real and transparent moment with each other we all sitting here it's late some places it's like seven o'clock so you probably in your bed in your drawers so be honest you already on your phone can't nobody see you just do it like <laughs> what do you need to change what things need to change what do you need to change? Let's be honest. So let's do a pop quiz. This is going to be for people who are watching this and replay and you guys. So give me your answers in the chat. What makes hair curly? I just want to know whether or not I'll be talking to myself. I need at least one person. Tell me something. Like what makes hair curly? Thank you guys for communicating with me. Yay. So we got tens across the board. Yay. Good. Okay, good. You got it. Need to be more consistent with trims and better diet choices. Yes, thank you for the transparency. Nature, no, nature isn't what made hair curly. Stop being lazy and take better care of my hair. I love you, Samantha. Thank you for your honesty. Listen, like to me, that's what made help me change. I was like, I am, um, I've been dusty. I need to change myself because this is dusty. Everybody has a dusty moment. Thank you. Yes, this is what makes hair curly: the shape and the size of the follicle. Yes. 
hair grease in jail. That's what you need to let go of. Okay, let me go back to the question just in case people are confused. Because I asked everybody, what do they need to change? I want to learn how to trim my hair. I don't want to go to anyone else to trim my hair. I have a video um, trimming my own hair. I'll tag you. I mean, I'll, I'll leave it in the description box when this is over. Follow crochet. Yes. Follow crochet. Yes. Drink more water. No, it's not genetics. Well, uh, no, it's not genetics. Okay, so the answer to that question is the size of the follicle. So what you are now seeing on the screen, somebody with naturally straight hair has a follicle that is perfectly round. Somebody who has like wavy to slightly curly hair, but not really has a follicle that is more like oval shape. Like if you were to turn it the other way, it would be more like oval shape. And then the when you have curly hair, the follicle is flat. And the tighter the follicle gets, the tighter the curl. And then the second thing, when scientists look at the human hair shaft under an electron microscope, they figured out that people who have curlier hair end up having more sulfur to sulfur linkages within the hair shaft. So the more sulfur to sulfur linkages you have within the hair shaft, the curl earlier the hair is and the tighter the follicle. So the thing is, when we're talking about sulfur to sulfur linkages, then that, that's when we're doing a relaxer. When we're doing a relaxer, I'm taking some of that protein out. But because of the size of your follicle, it don't matter how much I give you a relaxer, when the hair comes out of your follicle, it's going to be curly again. All right. So everybody take a screenshot of this because I want everybody to see this is what the human scalp looks like. So look at you see where it's the pore of the, pore of the sweat uh, gland up. When you put petroleum on your hair, you are filling that hole. The sweat is getting rid of toxins, water and all of that, all of the excess. So if you grease the scalp, you're blocking these ducts. So let me know in the comments did you learn anything and if you are sulfur yes i'm saying sulfur oh what you're trying to say i can't talk but i'm just joking yes i'm saying sulfur sulfur to sulfur linkages yes so again i, I just really want y'all to see what the human scalp looks like and give i really want you to give me an honest answer right? Give me an honest answer. Forget, take your emotions out of it. My auntie, my grandma, my grandma had a pet monkey and a pet gorilla and we used to grease our scouts together. I know, I know you reminiscing about your grandma and a pet monkey, but stop thinking about that. Picture this, forget your scout. Imagine this, how does it really look like you putting a layer? Imagine if I took some petroleum or anything and somebody was to just squeeze a layer of something all over the hair shaft like that would look so weird just imagine like if it was like a gelatin puddle like a whole nother layer on top of that first layer you would be like oh what is that well guess what we all agree y'all scalp that is what y'all do like stop it stop it this is another picture. I just really want y'all to see what the human hair scalp, what the human hair follicle, what the scalp looks like. What is you putting oil and butter on this? Like, why? So by looking at the hair's follicle, can you see how you putting petroleum is only going to fill that hole and cause scalp inflammation? This is how the bacteria that is growing within, like y'all know when y'all follicles, like when y'all scalp be red and burning and itching and pulsing and sometimes it's bleeding. This is what is happening. This is what it looks like on an, under an electron microscope. This is what the bacteria looks like. And so when you say, oh, I put oil on my scalp and it, it stopped, guess what? When you put the oil on, the, this bacteria that you're looking at right now, its favorite food is oil. So when you put oil on the scalp, it just went back down. Look at some of the follicles in the back. Some of the follicles in the back don't have that bacteria. 
because it's still down there eating. You didn't kill anything. Yes, the red things at the bottom are the, at the very, very bottom. This, this is bacteria. This is bacteria. The red stuff is bacteria. This, oh, wait. Yeah, this is bacteria. That is bacteria, but this is vain. The, the red and the blue, those that's your blood supply. That's your blood supply. So when you put petroleum on the scalp, all you're doing is blocking the blood supply. Like, it doesn't, like, y'all. You <laughs> said gross. That's why I purchased those tea because I need to change. Yes, I got you, baby. And so this is what the hair shaft looks like. That that's just dead uh skin. Just dead skin. So remember what I tell you about skin cell turnover? When y'all freak out, like, oh my god, it's dandruff, it's dry scalp. No, it's not. Every 28 days, the skin cells on your scalp die, they fall off, and they make their way out. But guess what? If you ain't using no combs and brushes, and if you only finger detangling, if you're only using your freaking fingers to comb your hair, you're not removing none of this. So you have a buildup and the overproduction because you don't comb your hair. A comb or a brush will remove that very, very easily. Again, I need y'all to take a screenshot of this one. You see where that hump is? That is, you see that hump in the back where the little white piece is? That is a blocked and clogged follicle. Do y'all understand when y'all put petroleum or when y'all grease the scalp, that's what's happening. Do you see that? There are layers to the hair shaft. It doesn't go oil on your scalp, then straight to the hair follicle. No, you have multiple layers before you get to the blood supply. You don't go straight to the follicle. Most of y'all, y'all be putting oil and petroleum on the follicle. Do y'all understand petroleum? You petroleum, if you put petroleum on your hand and then go run it under water, the water won't even penetrate. The petroleum didn't go anywhere. It's sitting on top of the follicle. It's not inside of it. It's sitting on top of it, stopping anything from going in. So do you see that blockage is on top of that layer of skin? Like, it's insanity. So that's why when y'all be like, oh, skin is so intense. I'm so intense because it's, this is dumb. Grease in the scalp is like, why? This bacteria that you looking at right there, that little red thing, guess what? It, it's favorite food is oil. So when you grease your scalp, when you put oil on your scalp, I don't care how long your mama did it. I don't care how long your grandma did it. When you grease your scalp, you are feeding this bacteria its favorite food. That's why you wash it and it stopped for a minute and then you put the oil back on. You're like, oh, the oil feels better. You know why I feel better when you put the oil on it? Because when you put the oil on it, it starts eating the oil instead of your follicle. Why do you think your, your scalp is bleeding? You think it's bleeding for nothing? No, it's bleeding because it's being eaten a lot. That's why. The, the follicle is not supposed, the human scalp is not supposed to be covered with anything. It's, it's not supposed to be covered with anything. That's why black women are the leading cases of seborrheic dermatitis and scalp infections because y'all will not stop putting oil on the scalp. And nobody can answer the question to why it's needed. If, if I just have one person tell me why, then I'll shut up, but nobody can tell me why. And the thing that they'll say is, oh, well, black women, our hair is curly, so it, make it, it can't make it down. That's why you comb it. Do y'all understand that black women are not the only women with curly hair? We have the curliest hair. Y'all want to know the reason that y'all don't know that other people got curly hair too? It's because everybody else keeps their hair stretched. And guess what? They curl still all pop back. I've been living in Vegas since I was seven, 16. I've been back and forth between Vegas and Detroit, but I've been in Vegas since I was 16. None of my, I probably since I was 16, I maybe have two, three black friends in Nevada 
all of my friends are was other races puerto rican samoan uh uh mexican mixed with uh with uh Filipino and black, oh, like all races. Guess what? All of them got had curly hair. The only friend that I had in Vegas that did not have curly hair was one of my Asian friends. Every other friend that I have had in Las Vegas, Nevada has not been a black woman and with the exception of like two or three and every last one of them have naturally curly hair. They do not have perm. So it's insane when you hear black women like, oh, because I'm hearing curly, stop. No, we are not the only ones with curly hair. We're not, okay? So let's talk real quick. If you need help, because I'm about to take questions really quick. If you need help outside of the questions that I am about to answer. If you need help outside of what we talk about today, I have something for you, right? Remember, this is 100% optional. So everything that we do within the seven day hair growth challenge is well over $2,000 worth of value if you take advantage. When you sign up, you need to join the group immediately. You can talk to me literally anytime you need to. You are in this challenge the lifetime of the course. I don't plan on closing it down at any time. So at any time, at any point in time, you can ask me a question. Am I answering as soon as you type it in? Probably not, but give me to the end of the day or the next day and I got you, right? But the the challenge is something that you can do automatically. You do not need me uh, automatically. As soon as you sign up, you have access to the entire course and it is yours, okay? So in the seven-day challenge, you first learn how to reset your hair growth cycle. The next thing you learn how to do is kill the follicle infections. With It's so simplistic, though. It's so simplistic. The, the things that you'll be doing will be so simplistic. You'll be like, is this really going to kill the infection? And then you'll just feel, feel the infection die and it'll be over. Check my reviews. All right. You'll learn a hair routine to put together. You'll learn or a hair routine put together by a master cosmetologist myself. And you will break down old formations to build new ones and you'll have lifetime access to ask questions within the seven day challenge you can enroll now and get the bonus of daily group coaching and when i say that i mean for example let's say your watch day is on the fifth of every month or not the fifth of every month lord every two weeks right so on that thursday every two weeks you can come in the group and say hey y'all i'm washing my hair today what do y'all think about xyz that's what we're doing in the group or it'll be hey sin what do you think about this shampoo or conditioner what shampoo or conditioner do i use you get a full list of the products that you should use and everything now remember you have two options you can either pay full price for the seven day hair growth challenge or you can use sizzle now you can do five payments of twenty dollars but price and plans vary from person to person so it could be cheaper somebody signed up for the seven day challenge last week for fifteen dollars so through Sizzle, you can do that. Remember, you have to add the seven day challenge to your cart and then check out. Go to the part where you put in your card, but instead of putting your card information, go down a little more. And then once you go down a little bit more, you'll see this Sizzle logo. You click that and you follow the prompt. All right. So when you enroll now, you get the free bonus of getting free ebooks and PDF downloads that come with. As we go along within the challenge, like next week we're gonna have a live just for seven day challenge members only right you get a bonus pdf that is in there and so many other things and again it's group coaching with me you can't beat it all right it's a one-time payment with online workshops and coaching within the group so you have to take advantage i love you guys so freaking much now we are going to get to y'all questions i'm coming back on the screen Thank you guys for kicking it with me today. How are you? <laughs> I hope this was good. I hope I wasn't like oh, talking you to death too much. I wanted to use my other camera, but for this setup that I was going to be doing, it just wasn't going to work. So.
So I am now going to go back up to some of your questions. So Ashley, can y'all start asking questions again? Because I'm gonna do the best I can. Huh? I'm gonna do the best I can to get to um my tea cold and this. I learned to go get my blood work done to find out what I'm deficient in. Yes. Yes. So I am going to send you, make sure you subscribe to my website and I'm going to send this PDF out. And the ones that I told you to take screenshots of, you can ask your doctor about those enzymes when you get it tested those specific enzymes that I gave y'all. That's why I was like, screenshot, take a screenshot because those are the things that I want y'all to ask y'all doctors about. And the thing is, when y'all go in there prepared, you make the your dermatologist job so much easier. And, and then y'all can get to a result faster because at the end of the day, your dermatologist is a scientist that based on what you're telling them and what they've learned with their education, they're just linking the pieces together. So make it easier for a player. Hold on, let me close this window. <clears throat> this is my pleasure, baby. My diet is way more important. Listen, no, it is. I'm so sick of hearing about that. I don't know what to do. I'm sick of all of them. I'm sick of Cardi B. I'm sick of Megan Stallion. I'm sick of all of them. I'm sick of Dwayne Wade. I'm sick of everybody. I always learn from you. I appreciate you. I no longer use grease on my hair. Thank you. It's so unneeded. You don't even need it. In my bed, we're good food, less people. Thank you, Kitty K. Oh, oh my God, where are my glasses? Oh my God. I didn't know it was, I didn't know I was supposed to comb my hair. I don't like combs, but I love, why don't you like combs? I'm not being smart. I really, I need, I'm not being smart. I need to understand. I have been doing hair for over a decade and my number one tool is a comb. What about, what do combs do? Because a brush is, more intense than a comb. So what about combs do you dislike so much and why? I'm not, I need to understand. This has been going on for years. I don't understand. And I need, I've, I've been in here talking to y'all for an hour about stuff that I know y'all don't understand, that I understand. So I feel like it's only right for y'all to explain. I don't get it. I'm not, I don't get it. Yes, do some scientific version real quick. I just washed it, but okay, check it in. What do you think about T gel for itchy scalp? Some dermatologists tell people with scalp paralysis to use coconut oil. Listen, remember when COVID happened? 
It, there, there were, there were uh, doctors telling y'all to drink bleach. Just because it's a dermatologist and she a dermatologist, that don't mean that she's right. Like, I don't care if I don't care if she a black dermatologist, if she got a medal. I don't care who she is. I don't, I would never go see a dermatologist that sells the oil. I actually went to see a dermatologist one time, walked in the lobby, saw that she had oils for sale, and I left. Because when I see a dermatologist that is selling oils to her clients, I see a dermatologist that is making money off of her clients that she know not going to listen to her no way. Because for the Team Natural thing has been going on for well over a decade. So for well over a decade, nobody's been listening to dermatologists. So they said, shit, you can't beat them, join them. So they started selling oils and butters too. You find a dermatologist that tells you to put coconut oil in or stop. I'm going to show you a dermatologist that's out to make bread. That's dumb. Coconut oil is a four on the comedogenic scale. The good dermatologists that I know tell me that the only thing that goes on my scalp is shampoo. The dermatologist that I learned under, the only thing that goes on the scalp is shampoo. A dermatologist that tells you to put coconut oil on your scalp is one that you should never book with again. I don't care what nobody talking about. How do how does a dermatologist tell you that to cure cerebral dermatitis, put oil on it? That's stupid. Now, if it's like if it's something that is formulated, like something that's written with a prescription, that's different. But they like, put coconut on your lawn. Like, dumb. I don't care if they've been to school. It's, how many dumb teachers do y'all got? How many, how many drivers can't drive? How many bus drivers can't drive? How many chefs can't cook? Just because she a, a, a dermatologist don't mean she right. If she, if she telling people to put coconut oil on her, it's on your scalp, and she a dermatologist, she's a dumb one. I don't, I don't care. And then I, once again, need somebody to explain to me how putting a comedogenic oil on the scalp is going to make it better. You know why? You know why I'm not a, I'm not arguing with nobody about it because dermatologists treat the scalp, but in, in the state, in the field of cosmetology, it goes cosmetologists, trichologists, dermatologists. Not that the trichologist knows more than the cosmetologist because they does not, they do not. Because a cosmetologist is in school for two years and a trichologist gets a certification in two weeks. It's very different. However, a dermatologist doesn't actually work with hair. They treat things of the scalp. They don't understand how patterns from the hair practices lead to inflammation of the scalp. So a dermatologist, a trichologist, and a cosmetologist have to work together. Because a cosmetologist is the only one who has experience tangibly with the clients working directly with the client's hair. A trichologist and a dermatologist not doing nothing to your hair. Your dermatologist isn't even looking at you. You know who's looking at you? The nurse. The nurse is coming in and taking your blood work. The nurse is coming in and having you pee in a cup. The nurse is coming in and taking your blood. The nurse is asking a bunch of questions. And then the nurse is going to write everything on a piece of paper, go give it to the doctor. The doctor going to look at it and then uh, compare the notes that the, that the nurse took to the things that they learned in school and write you a prescription. That's how it goes. So if a dermatologist is like, oh, you run it, go to a different one. That's some stupid stuff. You fix an uh, overproduction of oil with oil? Hmm, interesting. Anyway. Detox with what product? Seven day challenge has all of that information. Is Nioxin good? Yes. I love Nioxin. Yes. Oh, I'll do books. Thank you. I'm regrouping my hair after chemo. It's coming in. Patchy female pattern, bald knees. Where do I start? I know I need to detox my hair, my scalp, and my body. I don't know. So we have to do either one of two things. You can either take the seven day challenge or you can book a one on one consult because I need to know way more about you to be able to answer that. 
legally. Why you go get me in trouble? <laughs> Is it possible to increase sebum production? Absolutely. It's crazy. I'm not being an asshole. Literally, all the questions that y'all asked and stuff that you learned in the seven day challenge. So I can't answer those questions because in the seven day challenge, I teach you. I teach you how to reset your hair growth cycle after stuff like that. There's a person in the challenge who's done that, who's had this problem after chemo. And there is another person. Oh, there is another person within the seven day challenge who, well, everybody needs to increase sigma production and they learn how to increase sigma production in the seven day challenge. So, missing. Um, Pre-menopausal stage, I take oregano experiment tea, and it's working great, but I'm still going to my physician to find out what I'm deficient in. Yes, yes, please. And then, then once you find out what you're deficient in, right, make sure you take notes and you're listening. Then when you get home, research what fruits and vegetables you can ingest and what teas you can ingest, what herbs you can ingest to fill in whatever those whatever you're deficient in so when people are like i don't want to go to the dermatologist why go to the dermatologist because when you go to the dermatologist they could do blood work when you go to the dermatologist they could do a skin biopsy they could tell you what bacteria is in your scalp so then you know what to do you know what you're working with they could do a blood panel and test for enzymes. You can see what you're deficient in. And then once they tell you what you're deficient in, go to the damn grocery store, get it, eat it, you good. Hair growth is that easy. It's that freaking easy. Like, it's not. It's, I promise it's not that deep. Oh, God. Because it doesn't feel like... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I missed somebody. Sorry. No, I'm missing. Oh, I did read up to because it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything to my hair. You don't like combs because it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything to my hair. I don't get mad at me when I say this. When stuff with sentences normally don't make sense, it's because they don't make sense. That don't make sense because they don't make sense. A brush is harsher than a comb because it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything to my hair. You are doing something to your hair. You're removing the 50 to you are removing the 50 to 100 strands a day that you lose. You are removing the dead skin cells. Hold on. This is what you're doing when you comb in. When you comb in your hair, you're removing that. That's what you're doing with a comb. With a comb, you're removing that. When we learn how to remove dead skin, we learn to do it with a comb, not a brush. There's nothing wrong with combs. Y'all do more damage to the hair with y'all fingers than y'all do with a comb. I love y'all, but I, I, really, I really want y'all to make it make sense. If it don't make sense, it's because it don't make sense. I'm not being rude, but okay. Combs confuse me. Yes, they do. I only use my my wife, my wide tooth comb and my paddle brush on a daily basis. But when detangling, I will work my way with a rat tail comb. Look, you're not supposed to detangle with no rat tail comb. Who told you that? A rat tail comb, the teeth on the rat tail comb are this close together. Why? Who ever told you to detangle with a rat tail comb? Don't do that no more. That is the, if you, if you're experiencing breakage or thinning in any way, shape or form, that's why. There's nothing wrong with comb. The only time I use a red tail comb, a red tail comb is for detail. I use a red tail comb when I'm parting for braids so my parts can be prestigious, but I never comb through the actual hair with it unless I'm like straightening the hair for it to come down. But detangling? No. Y'all, like, 
in the professional cosmetologist, the combs have names. The combs have names. YouTubers made up names for everything. So y'all are confused. When you look online at a comb, the name of the comb is there. A detangling comb, a wide tube. Like y'all, I love y'all, but it, I love y'all. It'd be stressful. The only, a wide tube comb is, we're going to have another, we're going to move past combs. I love y'all, but as y'all can see, the comb conversation is stressing me out. So we'll talk, I'm going to make a video about combs and we'll talk about that. Okay, okay. Because, and I'm, I'm not being, but do y'all understand how crazy we sound to other races, the people? We are the only people on the planet scared of combs and brushes. We are also the only ones struggling with length retention and hair growth. Why are the women who have hair today but use combs and brushes? It's a part of their ritual. It's okay. I, let's talk about something else. I'm not being rude. Let's just talk about something else. And, um, how to get the sebum down the hair shaft? Just comb. I don't use oil or grease on my hair. My hair looks so dry and brittle. That's because your follicles are clogged. Something that you, just because you don't use oil and grease now doesn't mean that you didn't use it in the past. If you've ever greased the scalp with petroleum, it's probably still blocked. Yeah, I was feeling gaslighted. It was a white dermatologist. That's why I'm here giving y'all information so... When y'all see something that's not supposed to happen, you walk out. For example, if you go into a restaurant, you know, you know that raw meat shouldn't be with fruits and vegetables. It should be separate. You know that, right? That's it's a fact. You know that. So if you walk into a restaurant and you see raw meat next to the stuff that they put in the salad, you're not gonna say shit. You're just gonna walk away. And you're, you're going to go get in your car. Are you going to sit there and be like, I saw them chopping it. I saw them chopping it and I saw the chicken grease on the salad, but I thought it was salad dressing. It was good. I didn't think I was going to get sick. They so unprofessional. No, no you're not going to eat it. But with your hair, you sit there like she was pulling and tugging and it hurt so bad. I ain't say nothing. And and they know that they know that you're not going to say anything. And they also just the, the thing that most women get confused about. Y'all think that they don't watch you. Don't y'all understand it's a part of their job to watch you. So they see the same stuff online. They know that y'all don't listen to them. What is the first thing that a, that a black woman is going to tell a white a, a white dermatologist if they go in and tell them to stop greasing their scalp. The first thing a black woman is going to tell a dermatologist when they tell them what to do, which is to stop greasing their scalp and don't nothing go on the scalp but shampoo, they're going to, you going to say, well, you don't know because you white and I'm black and I need oil and I need grease. Let me say something to you. A dermatologist is not in school for two years. They in school for over a decade. You think these people that did spent over a decade in medical school want to sit there and argue and go back and forth with you about whether or not oil belongs in the scalp? No. They're going to be like, okay, dumbass, here. Hey, actually, why don't y'all create some oil or something to get to them? Because I'm done arguing with them. I'm going to just get them this oil. They're going to buy it. Easy money grab. I'm going to get on about my business. And then they go do other stuff. They make other money. That's how it goes. I'm telling you what I know. I work with dermatologists. <laughs> oh, okay. Some female said dermatologists told her to buy her hair shaft with coconut oil. And then that's why black women need to be more accountable. Y'all need to know the science of y'all body. Y'all cannot keep holding other people accountable for the stuff that you don't know. You don't know it. You didn't pick up a book and read it. You didn't. You didn't. It's plenty of clients that I have that go to dermatologists that tell them certain things and they be like, okay, never mind. And they get up and go out. 
you but if you don't know nothing about the science of the human body and you depending on everybody on tv you depending on youtube you depending on everything outside of yourself to know the answers for yourself is insanity why are you more dependent on a dermatologist that don't know nothing about you that don't care nothing about you to know more about you than you do that's why y'all can get played they can tell y'all whatever they want to tell y'all because y'all don't know shit. no way i can tell you whatever i want to tell you because you haven't studied that's why i wasn't reading off none of that i said take screenshots because i am not here to be nobody's savior i hate being the smartest person in the room it is annoying i am not trying to create a bunch of super fans i want to create a bunch of women who can think on their own a bunch of accountable women who are done playing the victim we grown as hell he he can't say anything and i can't believe it i'm so scared to say something grow up y'all need to grow the hell up y'all too old to be scared of other grown-ass women like it's dumb and i'm not about to be oh guys. no grow up if y'all can listen to cardi b and talk about how y'all need buckets and mops go shit read a book it's annoying I have an autoimmune disease, so do I. I uh, hydronitis superativa. That's more of a reason why your pro more than anybody, me and you, more than anybody, we need to have patterns and routines. We can't do, oh, no combs, no brushes, no. No, you need to use every tool at your disposal if your body is automatically triggered to attack itself. If your immune system is triggered by things outside of you to attack yourself, you need to have more structured patterns than anybody. You scared of combs, you need to lose that fear if you have an autoimmune disease. I have one too. I, I know the answer, but I'm trying to figure out how I can answer it without. I'll have to make a video on that. I can't because it's talking about medications. And I know it looks like I'm just a YouTuber, but I'm not. Y'all gonna get me in trouble. I'll, I'll make a video for you to answer that, but I can't. I can't. I can't answer that. Not like I want to. How much is a one-on-one? -on -one? Well, my one-on-ones are 150 or 160 an hour, if I'm not mistaken. But I think it's 150, 150 an hour. And then the seven-day challenge is a hundred dollars even. Excuse me, that was gross. You can pay for the seven-day challenge on Sizzle, but you can't pay for a one-on-one -on -one consultation on Sizzle. I don't think. Is calcium important with hair growth? Calcium. Yes. Oh my God, it's so important. Um, watch the. I'm gonna uh, link it in the description box. But watch the very last video that I did on the herb, on uh my crimson magic blend, and it's talking all about calcium. I explain it in there. Okay, thank you. I'll come every day. Yes, babe. Please. No, I like that. Yes, you're right. I know you're not getting on us, me. It has to make sense. You're right. Yeah, so thank you so much. Because I'm not being an asshole. I'm not being an asshole. I love you. But I just want the, the intensity. The intensity that y'all see with me is come like imagine I'm like your spirit woman. I'm like, I'm like your higher self that's irritated because the only reason that y'all going through stress is because you keep doing little stupid stuff look at it like that 
I'm not being an asshole. I'm I'm just saying the stuff that the that your spirit want to say. Your spirit is like, girl, we could be having mop. Not what, but mop. Hmm? It's okay, but good. Now you do. And the reason that I'm so intense when I talk is because if when, like, let's say I say, oh, no, don't do that. Don't don't put barbecue sauce on your nipples. <laughs> and then you go with I'm about to I ain't about to see I don't know what she talking about. I'm about to do this. But then as you put barbecue sauce on your nipples in the back of your head, all you gonna hear is me like girl, that's why you about to have nippleitis. You're gonna have nippleitis with that barbecue sauce. That's all I'm trying to do. I just wanna be that little voice like you gonna have nippleitis. Nippleitis, you gonna be nippleitis. I only use my fingers to pull apart, then I comb through all my hair. Stop using your fingers to do stuff and just comb your hair. I don't like my comb with the curves. Well, get a different comb. They have thousands of them. Yes, she chose the wrong one already. So, to tell the truth. Yeah. I love you guys. I love this energy today because you guys are so like, I just can't stand talking to soft women. I just don't like it. That's not my tribe. And when I say soft, I don't mean like, let me just talk like this. I like women who talk like this. That's not what I'm saying because not all women that um, talk like this are soft. Some women that talk like this will still kick your ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is how my mother talks. And my mother is a really ghetto, but you would never know because she just looks like this all the time. Oh my God. My mother is the West Side, but. I, my mama from the west side of Detroit and my daddy from the east side. So I'm a real good combination of the two. Mm -hmm. Barbecue. Barbecue. Yes. Hey, guys. I know you're going bald. I know that it's your fault. But it's okay. All you have to do is Use some more oil to unblock the follicle that's already clogged with oil. And get what on the bottle it says Sendow's unblocking oil. Use Sendow's oil to cure your overproduction of oil. It is dumb. Accountability is everything. And I this is going off left field is gonna feel like to some people, but I feel like accountability is something that black women need, period. In all races. Like our grandmother's generation needs to be accountable. Our mother's generation, not my mama, my mama, my mama a G. Not my mama. Some of y'all dusty mamas, some of y'all dusty grandmas need to be accountable. But because nobody is accountable, when, when you're not accountable, you're not learning from your mistakes. And if you're not learning from your mistakes, you don't know how to tell people a role. You don't know how to give the people coming behind you a roadblock so they don't make those mistakes. Because you ain't learned shit from them because you've never been accountable for them. That's why I can't wait for Freak Nick to come up. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, thank you. What is this? A credit card? No, it's like a um, you can make payment. Look, I can tell. Look, the mindful career woman. Listen, anybody who describes themselves as mindful means that they speak a lot. I mean, they think a lot before they speak and. Normally women who talk like this are not 
um, talking like this because they're soft. They are talking like this because there's a crazy person that lives inside. And <laughs> by smiling and doing this with their eyes as they talk, they're keeping that crazy person down inside. They're very, very good. And, um, <laughs> looking like nothing's bothering them even when it is and soft-spoken women in my opinion are the crazy ones yeah <laughs> i'm just saying it's just my opinion <laughs> i'm only saying that because i have crazies i know soft-spoken people and they're crazy i've started i've started drinking pt how long after drinking pt do you start to see changes um it just it depends on what what it needs to change i have a blog post that i'll leave in the description box below that you can read and it explains that yes i won't yes because y'all do not have to be running into the problems that y'all running into and i know it for a fact because the women who listen to me see hair growth instantly and love the one who said um about the blue tea about the blue tea it depends on what you're doing so you can't have like for and i'm not saying this is what you're doing right but you can't have like fast food at least once a day or you can't have a diet that consists of like fried foods and like you can't have an unhealthy diet and be like how long does it take like the blue tea to work because if you're if the blue tea has to fight the, if the blue tea has to fight against the stuff that you are putting in the body, it can never go towards rebuilding new hair growth cells because it's fighting against what you're what you're eating. So it that's like it just depends on what you're doing. But uh, just generally, if everything is good within your body, three months is the amount of time for any herb. Herbs are not instant gratification. Hair is not instant gratification. You need to give the you need to give your body a chance to to kill the follicle, reset the hair growth cycle, and start growing back. So I say three months. It could be way shorter, but I like to um, over promise uh, under the uh, under promise and over deliver. So I, I want to say, oh, it'll take as long as three months, but it could take three weeks. But I'd rather say it'll take three months than to take three weeks and you got stuff that you need to fix within your body. And you're like, you said it'll take three weeks. So I don't know. It depends on how you eat and what your diet is like. I was experiencing baldness and thanks to send out. I stopped putting recent oils on the scalp and my bald spots are going away. And it's, listen, what, listen, Linda, think about it. I lose money telling you not to put stuff in your hair. Do y'all understand how many people offer me money? My rates are not cheap. I don't charge under $1,000 for brand deals. I don't. Do y'all understand how many brands reach out to me? Every brand that y'all see a sponsored video in y'all favorite YouTubers videos, they respond to me too. That's why my channel like doesn't have as many views because I'm not I'm not just doing random shit just to get views from y'all. I'm not doing it. I'm going to stay integral. I sleep good at night. Good. I could do the same brand deals everybody else doing. I'm not doing it. I'm not taking the money because the shit's not integral. And you know why? The people who are having y'all do it, they haven't spent one day in nobody scientific nothing. It's a girl that y'all, I ain't going to say nobody's name, but it's a girl that y'all been buying hair products from for fucking years. She just went to cosmetology school. And now y'all don't, none of y'all know why y'all got all these follicle infections, all of the scalp disorders. The same women who were swearing by all of these products are also the same women telling y'all to use Nutrafol to fix scalp disorders. Y'all have scalp disorders because of the shit that we've talked about today. Listen, I've been saying the same thing this whole time. Everybody switching up, making new videos. I'm never making new videos. I've been saying the same thing for years and it ain't gonna change. 
Okay, my husband has a ton of dandruff ever since going to this nasty barber. I told him to stay away. Now, even he uses clarifying shampoo on his scalp. Not clean. Oh, let me wash his hair. What are you doing wrong? Nothing. He just got a scalp, but he got a follicle infection. You should give your husband this shampoo and he'll be good. Husbands don't listen, girl. I got one. I get it. Hold on. This one right here. Take a screenshot. I'm going to leave a link to it. Um, Like, if you go to my Amazon store and then you go to the um to the part that says, oh, my God, I can't think. Scalp treatments, yeah, in my Amazon store. So to get to my Amazon store, literally all you gotta do is go on Google and type in send out Amazon and my Amazon store pop right up. <laughs> For real. So once you type in on Google, just send out Amazon. Well, send Smith or send out. I don't know. One of them type in both of them. I don't know. And my Amazon store and it'll pop right up. And then go to where it says scalp treatments or just look through all of the lists until you see this one. This shampoo, tell your husband to use this shampoo and conditioner and nothing else. Do not put anything else on his scalp, period, period. And he probably should go to a different barber because that barber probably doesn't sanitize his tools. And it sounds like your husband has a follicle infection. And y'all be sharing beds. So remember, when your man got other infections, so good. Thank you, Sendal, for being passionate about hair and the scalp. Everyone not putting, everyone not putting grease and oil on the scalp works. And try it for yourself, and you will see the same results. I'm like literally just try it. Like wash your hair. Just have a week where you try it, and then if I'm wrong, go back and spend half your damn shit on hair products. I don't give a shit. Like go ahead. I'm just telling you one time. Try it my way and watch your scalp inflammation go away without a trip to your dermatologist, without a copay. Hey. No problem. Cloud chasing is short lived because when you cloud chase, you do it forever. If I make, if I keep trying to make videos like, oh, let me do the next viral hack, I'm going to constantly be chasing viral videos. And at the beginning of my YouTube career, I thought that that's what I had to do. But then when I understood that I can make $60,000 with 500 people, I don't need 100,000 views to make $60,000. If you do the math, you, I don't need 100,000 views. I don't need 20,000 views. I don't need 200,000 views. I don't need that. I sell out of every blend in the, like every two weeks without, without videos that got five, 600,000 views. I don't need to clout chase. I have no, I don't even like I don't like, I'm an introvert. I don't like to be around people like that. I would be so okay, like having a ghost brand where nobody even knows what I look like. I have no problem with that. I have no, like, for what? Um, It is the one that I made, the very last herbal video that I made. I see it has some thick ass. Yes. Oh my, like the, this shampoo, the shampoo and conditioner is, is uh, created by dermatologists. A dermatologist made, and it's not, a, it, and do you see the difference? The, that shampoo is made with salicylic acid by a dermatologist. Salicylic acid is killing dead skin. It's killing the dead skin. and re, I mean, not killing the dead skin. It's drying out the dead skin and removing it. So that your follicle is no longer blocked. So a dermatologist that's like, use coconut oil, run, run, run. And you can tell her I said it. 
because I've had conversations. Like, first of all, I'm a, I've am been a licensed cosmetologist for over a decade. Do y'all know how many dermatologists have sat in my chair? Do y'all know how many clients I had that were dermatologists? I've talked to dermatologists and they've straight up told me, oh, girl, women don't listen to me. So you got to do what you got to do. Like, what do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? Stop playing with me. That makes no sense. All right. Okay. So I love you guys. We have been here for two hours. I think we're done with questions. Your Olaplex video helped. I just used Olaplex Discovery Kit, did everything free for me. Yes, my hair didn't revert after blow drying, and it's already been a week. So it's wash day. So she just kept it simplistic and did a very basic hair routine with shampoo. Like she did a treatment. So if she did, was she with her using three? That's a treatment. Four C. She detoxed her scalp. Number six. I mean, number eight was the moisturizing conditioner that she used after she did a follicle detox. Girl, you better get it. And then after that, she styled her hair with six and nine. And her hair has not reverted back. And it's time for her to wash her hair again. Blow dryers are not the devil. There's nothing wrong with Olaplex. You're using it wrong. You're using a blow dryer wrong. You're using the combs wrong. You're using the brushes wrong. If combs were bad, the field of cosmetology would not have been around longer. Than, this, the field of cosmetology has been around longer than everybody listening to the sound of my voice has been alive, longer than everybody's listening to the sound of my voice. Mama and grandma has been alive. And guess what? They've been using combs and brushes the whole time. For a long time. So, make it make sense. I love y'all so very much. Um, I am going to leave links to everything in the description box below. Make sure um, you look in the description box, right? The video that is in the description box, click on that video. I really want you guys to watch it as soon as this one is over and then we can end our night. Watch that video and then we end our night. Look in that description box. You can sign up for the seven day challenge in there. You can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation there. All of the information that you guys need is going to be in there. All right. Once you join my mailing list on my website, you will get this full PDF. So if you want this full entire PDF that we went through today, then you, of course, would have to sign up for my email list. And when you sign up for my email list, I'm going to give everybody about 24 hours to sign up. And this time tomorrow, we are going to send this full PDF out to everybody that has been here because I really want you guys to have this information. I really want you guys to have this information for you to go to on your own time so you're not dependent on me. Then on top of that, everything that I told y'all to do screenshots, I really want y'all to do screenshots, right? I'm not trying to create a bunch of followers. I want to create a bunch of people who know what they're talking about. So when y'all, after y'all do y'all research today, Y'all can end all of these conversations in these blogs. You can end all of these conversations because you're going to be having fat. You'll have the names of enzymes. You'll have the exact fruits and vegetables that you're supposed to eat to replenish these enzymes. Y'all won't need a hair product for shit. You won't need a hair growth product for nothing. What are you talking about? That's new. There's no cosmetologist telling you you need hair products. That's YouTubers. No hair, no cosmetologist unless she toting her own shit and trying to make you believe that she needed so she can make sales. You ain't going to see no cosmetologist that's telling you you need hair products. No. A cosmetologist is going to tell you you need healthy routines. You need healthy patterns. That's what a cosmetologist is going to tell you. Period. And if you meet somebody that's telling you the latter, she don't know no better. She shouldn't be in your hair until she knows better. What are we talking about? Everything that I'm saying today, you can fact check yourself. Okay? I love you guys. Thanks, man. I feel like I'm hitting a broke wall. I noticed. 
growth from last year to this year. And he says, you must not have seen any change. I feel like I'm doing all the right things I should. Well, your hair does go through cycles, so you could, one or two things is happening. Either something you're doing is slowing down your hair growth cycle, so watch those videos. They're all like, watch, binge watch the video. I, I post a video almost every day. So binge watch my videos from the last week and it will break down literally everything that you're having a problem with. And it'll it'll give you the tools to fix the problem. And then if I don't say it in the video, always go over to my blog because I have long blog posts that tell you exactly what to do. Y'all just got to go take advantage of the information. It's all on my website. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. I appreciate you appreciating me. Thank you. That's amazing. No, you're amazing, Boo. And thank you for always being here. I appreciate you so much. We are getting our respect back from cosmetologists and dermatologists. Yes. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. You got it. Study. Look, they going to be like, who is you? Listen, I have uh, one of my clients that did a uh, one-on-one -on -one with me. She went in to see her dermatologist. Mind you, her dermatologist told her, you're going to be born. Your follicle's dead. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. But here, I don't know what to tell you. After our one-on-one -on -one consultation, she went back in to see her dermatologist. Her dermatologist was like, hell no. They say hell no. But her dermatologist was shocked like, I really thought your follicle was dead. We did not see any cell activity. Now that spot is growing back in. And she had CCCA. CCCA. -C -C I had to make sure I said three C's. I used to not want to toot my own horn, but now I am because I'm damn good at what I do. All right. I love you guys so much. So again, I need you guys to save this, share it with everybody. I want you to only share it with people that you know are going to do the research. And when this is over, please do not let this be a channel that you just come on to be entertained. I'm not, I'm not here to do the second job. Okay. So I really, really want y'all to do the work. I really want y'all to do the work. I really want us to get to a place where we are able to cleanse our follicles because right now the black stuff that y'all see, this is how everybody's follicle looks. But right now by the end of it, we're clearing all of this stuff out and we're making clean follicles, clean scalps, clean follicles is what we're doing. That is my whole purpose behind everything. So I really, really hope that um, this was enough. I mean, not enough. I know, excuse me. I wasn't able to get to everything, but I'm doing the best that I can to explain everything to you. Um, I think one of the most challenging things is people think that like when it comes to people think that when it comes to like hair care and stuff that is like, you can learn everything that it is to learn in a 15 minute video. If you can learn everything that there is to learn about the human scalp and the human hair shaft in a 15 minute video, I don't think a dermatologist would be in school for over a decade. If you can learn everything that there is to learn about the human scalp in one 15 minute video, why would a dermatologist be in school for over a decade? That makes no sense. Why would a cosmetologist have to go to school for two years if you can learn everything that there is to learn in a 15 minute video the dermatologists need their money back and i need my money back from all the classes i'm into a killer make it make sense that's why i make videos like this so y'all can learn how where to go where to go look and now today nobody anybody that is in this live today nobody has excuses so do me a favor and we're going to play a trick on people who don't watch to the end because they're not going to know. So I need y'all to do me a favor. When this video is over, so not right now, when this video is over, I need y'all to go back in the comments and say, we not doing it no more, CL, we promise. That's the, all I want you to say. We got it. We not doing it no more, CL, we promise. And then everybody going to be like, what she talking about? Oh, and y'all would have known if y'all would have stayed to the end. So once this ends, remember that's your homework. Go, well, you got a, a way more homework than that. It's just your first thing of homework. 
go in the comments and say, all right, Sam, we ain't going to do it no more. We got it. We promise. All right. I love y'all so much. And until our next chat, subscribe. And again, make sure you head over to my website, subscribe to my website, and then I will send you this PDF. All right. I love